All right, let's go ahead and get started here. And uh, we're going to start by reviewing over what we were looking at um, yesterday and the day before, whether it be the uh, you know, Notre Dame Leprechaun or Hall Pass or Names or whatever it is that we were you know, sending through the lenses. Mostly the types of lenses we used were, we really kind of set one of the lenses to the side and didn't really touch it much. We used converging lenses, right? We set the diverging lens aside because really, I mean, it, it can only do so much, right? We said a diverging lens always produces what kind of image class? Yeah. Well, I'm still on my, the image. What you see through the lens is still on this side, right? So the, the, my, my light should go through the lens over there, and it's not doing that. Right, so that means the image, since it's over here, same place as I am, that's a virtual image, upright, and reduced, right? So the diverging lens, always virtual, upright, reduced images. But the converging lenses, right? We said there's six different cases, and if we take an object that's practically an infinite distance away, a light source, an infinite distance away, like the sun, um, then those light rays, as they come to the lens, are going to produce what? A dot of light, which we call a point image, right, with a whole lot of energy, enough to burn stuff. And uh, that energy is a point image that forms where? Um, at, the at the focal point, right? That, that light source produces a point image at the focal point. Now, we then began looking at objects that were closer than an infinite distance away, right? And so we had uh, the different lenses. And when we had the object in question, whether it be my, you know, my phone or the name or whatever, whenever that object was greater than twice the focal length away, the image that projected on the screen was always uh, real because it was actually going through the lens, inverted, inverted always upside down, mm -hmm. and much smaller. Now, as the object and lens got closer together, the object, the image on the screen got bigger, right? And uh, until if, when we got it to what we assumed to be at the double focal length, what type of image was produced? Still real, inverted. still inverted, inverted. No, unmagnified. unmagnified at double the focal length. When we slid the lens and object closer together than double the focal length, then the image we got was real. real. Still inverted, then enlarged. And in fact, we got it, as we got closer and closer, remember the image got bigger and bigger. Now, it also got further and further away. Remember, we were dragging that, uh, we were taking our uh, poster board and we were getting it further and further and further away. And by that time, light from the windows was making it hard to even see the image until eventually, if the object was theoretically at that focal length away, class, no image at all. And then if we got it even closer still, well, of course, you're still not going to get an image, but if you looked at it from the other side, you could now see Remember, the image was now on behind the lens still, so it was virtual, upright, and enlarged, right? You had a nice big Irish leprechaun. Warhol Pass, that was as cool as the Irish leprechaun. Anyway, all right, so make sure we know those cases of image formation. Um, we've looked at with the lenses, right? We looked at with laser beams running through the lenses and how a converging lens class causes the light rays to come together. And where they came together, as we saw that point, that was your focal point. That was your focal length. Um, and uh, the diverging lenses, what did those do with the light rays? Caused them to spread outward from each other. Okay, so converging versus diverging. And uh, the focal length was different for all three of the lenses. Um, what are the three things that affect the focal length of a lens? Kind of this ties right into our homework, which we're about to get into. Three things affect the focal length of a lens. The refractive index. The refractive index. What is the lens made out of? Now, all of those lenses were made of the same type of glass. So they all have the same refractive index, but I mean, you could make lenses out of different stuff. So um, the refractive index, certainly. Mm -hmm. Both radii of curvature affect it. And that leads us to the lens maker equation from yesterday. What is that lens maker equation, Kendall? Uh, 
excellent. So there's the refractive in index, there's the radii of curvature, those are the three things that affect this focal length. A lot of reciprocals, remember. We do want to remember the minus here, not a plus, but a minus. And the n minus one, I said basically all you gotta do is Take the one off the front of the refractive index, because all of our refractive indices except diamond start with a one anyway. Does not the one off this gives you your decimal value. The R1 and R2 we had to be careful with. R1 refers to the radius of the surface that is closest to the object. Surface one is closest to the object. Radius one is the radius of that surface closest to the object. So that means radius two class would be the radius of the surface that's away from the object, right? Every lens has two surfaces. One surface faces the object, the other surface is away. Now, these radii can be positive and the radii can be negative. What makes positive radii? The other one. If the radii go away from the object. So if the object is here and the radii run that direction, they're positive. If the object is here and the radii run toward the object, then the radii are mm -hmm. negative. We also said there's a sign convention with the focal length. It tells us something when we get our focal length. A positive focal length class tells us the lens is okay. converging. And a negative focal length tells us that the lens is okay. diverging. We practiced this in our homework last night. On the handout, we did just the first two problems on the handout, that top row. And read that first problem for us, if you would, Audrey. A lens has a concave side and a convex side with radii of curvature 12 centimeters and 18 centimeters respectively. If the convex side is toward the object, determine the focal length of the lens and tell whether the lens is converging or diverging. Index in the index of refraction for the lens is 1.46. All right, so remember yesterday at the end of the hour as we looked at the example problem, we showed it doesn't matter which side is toward the object as far as the focal length is concerned. However, what it does do for us is it allows us to all work the problem the exact same way. So there's a little more uniformity as we go over. It's like Kendall's like, well, I had the convex side toward the object. And Andre's there, I had the concave side toward the object. Now I gotta show two different ways to do it. Just makes my life easier, but it technically doesn't matter. So we've got a lens, and I said, I recommend as you draw your sketch, you start with your optical plane. It says there's a concave side. Well, to have a concave side, we have to give ourselves a little room bulge outward from the ends to give myself room for it to cave in. And it says the concave side has what radius of curvature? The concave was the first one mentioned, so the first radius mentioned belongs to the concave side. Its radius was 12 centimeters. Now, picture the concavity and picture this concavity finishing out its own circle. It would look something like this. Its radius then must go this direction because its center is somewhere around there, correct? So this radius, I don't know if it's radius one or two yet, this radius is 12 centimeters. I don't know if it's positive or negative yet, but its value is 12 centimeters. The other side it says is convex. So from the focal plane, I don't need to come out on the ends to give myself room to cave in, Rather, I'm going to bulge outward. Now, it tells me that the radius for the convex side class is 18. A bigger radius means what? Less curve, right? More flat, if you will. So now, if you were to draw it wrong, it's not the end of the world, but if we want to be more or less accurate, I would need to draw this flatter than I did the concave side, technically, again. The picture is for reference only, but if we're wanting to be accurate in our drawing, that would help. So we have slightly flatter here, slightly more curved here. But this side bulges outward just a little bit. Well, if that's true, when I finish the circle, the circle once again goes like this. So once again, this radius would go in this direction. Now, it said the object, the convex side, is toward the object. So we should have placed our object, whatever it was, on the right-hand side, or if we had it the other direction, on the left-hand side, but on the convex side. Did we have that? Since the object is over here, both radii are positive, because both radii go away from the object. Does that make sense? So both positive 12 and positive 18. Now, you have to know which radius is which, though. 
the convex side is toward the object. So class, this convex side is side one. So its radius, the 18, is radius one. This then becomes side two, so the 12 becomes the radius two. How did we do on the sketch? Again, how accurate the curvature is is minute, just, you know, since I like to be accurate. But really, the, the placement of things is the more important. How did we do on the setup? Okay, you got one and two switched. Does it make sense now? So again, it's not the first one you draw is one, and the second one you draw is two, but whichever surface is closer to the object gets to be one, and the surface away from the object has its radius as two. That is going to make a difference in the numbering here. Because as we come over here and plug it in, our reciprocal of the focal length equals, now what is n minus 1? If the refractive index is 1.46 class, just put in 0.46, just knock off the 1. And then we should have a 1 over 18 minus 1 over 12. Again, if one of these, had, if this had been a negative 12, the negatives could have canceled, we could have made it a positive. But the equation calls for the subtraction. And so let's plug it into the calculator. Take the reciprocal of 18 minus the reciprocal of 12, multiply that by 0.46, and then at the end, we need to take the reciprocal one more time. And we end up getting a very interesting focal length. Yeah, negative 78.26, blah, blah, blah. It was, um, I got two sig figs, so. Negative 78, and the focal length is measured in the same units as the radii of curvature will be. So we'll say negative 78 centimeters is the focal length. Now, curious, did you ladies have positive 78 for your focal length? And again, that's what will happen if you get the radii mixed up with each other, is it will change the sign convention of your answer. So what about a negative 78, which means, well, I said tell whether the lens is converging or diverging. Since you had positive 78, ladies, you both should have said converging since it should have been negative our answer would be it's a diverging lens by the way this is somewhat mimicking in a way what my glasses are right the convex side is toward the object slight bulge slight bulge there not much more pronounced curve on the back side of the lens with the concavity my lenses are diverging lenses now this is not necessarily my focal length but uh, we get the idea all right questions on that first problem all right, let's take a look at the second problem. Read that one for us, if you would. Um, Kendall. All right, so once again, I get ready to draw, and the first surface I should draw class is convex. convex. So I draw a side that bulges out. Its radius class is 15 centimeters. Which direction should the radius go? To the left or to the right? The way I've got it drawn. To the right. Because if the circle continued, it would continue around there. So its radius, I don't know if it's radius 1 or not, I don't know if it's positive or negative yet, but I know it's 15 centimeters. The next surface is concave which means I need to come out from the optical plane a little bit and get myself room. Now, what's its radius of curvature? 21. It's the bigger radius, so it is less curved. So I'm going to come just a little bit flatter than I did the last time so that the convex side bulges more than this side case. Where should its radius go, to the left or to the right? Will the radius always go the same direction? No. Not always. They happen to in these two problems that we've done, but the radii could go in two separate directions, as we've seen on page 304. Right? The radii can run in opposite directions. In fact, they will for any double concave or double convex. One will be on one side, one will be on the other. Um, it says that the convex side is toward the object. So this is surface one, so this is radius one. And this would be radius two. Both radii will be positive once again. Will that always be the case? No, but it happens to be the case here. So we'll say that the reciprocal of the focal length equals, what's the n minus 1 for this problem? 0.53. We take off the 1 from the index of refraction, and we'll say that the reciprocal of 
15 centimeters minus the reciprocal of 21 centimeters. Did we plug that all in correctly? All right, it helped that the first side I mentioned was indeed really the first side, but by seeing it two different ways, you see why it is the way it is. So we both should have gotten the correct answer here. And uh, we take reciprocal, subtract those times 0.53, take reciprocal. And uh, what do we get for the focal length of the lens? 99. 99 centimeters, almost one full meter. Now, that's a pretty long focal length compared to the lenses we used. Right? I mean, our focal lengths were, as we were, you know, igniting things, um, <laughs> our focal length was, you know, this far, or this far, or even this far. I mean, having to hold the lens one meter from the ground to catch sun's rays and focus at a focal length, that's pretty weak, really, truly, right? I mean, a stronger lens can focus it quickly, a weaker lens focuses it less quickly. That's a pretty weak, weak focal length. Is it converging or diverging, though? It is indeed converging. All right, Michael, as you've watched us going over these, you're starting to catch on to what we're doing with the lens maker equation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read the third problem for us, Michael. We'll go and do that together now. A double convex lens has size of radii and curvature of 20 centimeters and 20 centimeters, respectively. Determine the focal length and the width of the lens and tell whether the lens is converging or diverging. All right, so it's a double convex. So, class, I start with my mm -hmm. optical plane. And since it's double convex, both sides have to bulge. bulge outward. Now, the first side, it says, bulges with a radius of 20 centimeters. So when I draw that first bulge, I should draw, of the two of them, the first bulge should be bigger radius means less bulge. So this side is the flatter side. The next side has a radius of only 10 centimeters. The next bulge is going to be much more pronounced. Do we get the idea of what this lens is looking like? So the, the first side that we have, 20 centimeter side, slight bulge, 10 centimeter side, larger bulge. Now, for my first 20 centimeter flatter side, which direction should I draw the radius? To the right, because if I continue the circle, it will continue over there. The center of curvature will be somewhere over here. That radius is 20 centimeters. The other side, if I drew its radius, where should it go? Mm -hmm. To the left, because its radius, which by the way is much shorter, its radius would go this way, because the curve would form around this way. Um, and it says, it doesn't tell you which side should be toward the object. We're going to let Michael pick. Where do you want the object, on the left side of the lens or the right side of the lens? On the left side. On the left side. So the object will be over here. This surface then class is surface one, because it is toward the object. Which radius then is radius one? This is the surface, and its radius is the 20. So radius one is the 20 centimeters. Does that make sense? Therefore, obviously, the 10 centimeters is radius two. Notice the radii go in opposite directions, though. One of them's positive, one of them's negative. Which radius must be the negative? The 10. The 10 centimeter radius is toward the object. This is actually a negative 10 centimeter radius now. Does that make sense? All of this would change if Michael had put the object on the right. Then radius 1 would have been the 10 and it would have been positive. Radius 2 would have been the 20 and it would have been the negative, right? But it, and it's entirely up to him. The math would work the same regardless. So we come over here. We say 1 over f equals, what do we plug in for the n minus 1, Michael? Um, 1 over 24. For the n minus uh, 1. 0. 0. 0. 0.48. And uh, for the 1 over r1 class, I need to put 1 over 20 minus 1 over negative, negative 10. But the two negatives can give me a positive. And so, and what do we get? This is uh, somewhat similar to the lenses we were using. I mean, ours were obviously more symmetric, but the focal length is more in line with the kinds of lenses we've been playing with. About 14 centimeters, 13.8 repeating, but about 13, 14 centimeters. Now, we already knew this. We've already memorized that a double convex lens will always be a 
converging lens. But of course, the math backs it up by having the positive focal length. Questions on that? And you see, to you do problem number four. You do problem number four on the handout now. Take just a few minutes to work, and then we'll go over it together. So we're going to take a look at this problem. Read it for us, if you would, Audrey. A double concave lens has sides of 39 dimensions, 13 centimeters, and 12 centimeters, respectively. Determine the focal length of the lens and tell whether the lens is converging or diverging. All right, I trust you started with your focal plane. I trust you came out a little bit from the lens and uh, went with a uh, curve of some pronouncedness, if you will. And then the other one has a more pronounced curve, 12 centimeters, so maybe come out a little further for the other side and make this side even more curved, okay? Again, if it wasn't perfect, it doesn't really matter. Here we've got a radius of 15 centimeters, and here we have the radius of 12 centimeters. Really didn't matter which side you put toward the lens or which side was toward the object. Audrey, left or right, where was your object? You got on the left side here, so closer to the 15 centimeter radius, okay? Which means, by the way, that this 15 centimeter radius class is radius one. Well, I should say, not because the radius is closer, but because this surface is closer, hence it's radius one, but radius one is also going to be negative because it's toward the object. This surface is further away based on the way Audrey had it done, which makes it surface two, which makes this radius two, which makes it also then, since it's going away from the object, positive. All right, did we all happen to draw it the same way by any chance? Michael mixed it up. So you had your object over here. Mm -hmm. This was radius one, radius two, this was negative, that was positive. The answer will come up the exact same, however. We first of all uh, needed to plug in the n minus one, which Audrey gave you. Um, 0. 0.52. 0. 0.52. And then Audrey would have said one over negative 15 minus one over 12. Michael, you would have said one over negative 12 minus one over 15. They would still make it something over negative or that because I did the radius the other way too. Oh, okay, gotcha, okay. So uh, we plug it in, and we take the reciprocal of negative 15 minus the reciprocal of positive 12, and multiply that by 0.52, and take the reciprocal of that. And what do we get for the focal length, Audrey? Um, 
Maybe 12.8. Yeah, maybe 12.82 or rounded. Um, 13. Well, negative 13. You said the negative already, but lost it there. Negative 13 okay. centimeters. And therefore, class, the lens is okay. diverging. Of course, we knew if it's a double concave lens, it's going to be a diverging lens. I right, did we get this answer? Michael, yes. Audrey Kendall, no questions. Okay. Um, maybe it's canceling. Oh, I see. Put the negative on the wrong one, perhaps? Yeah. Uh, okay, careful with that then. All right, Kendall, co questions, comments? I don't know that positive, but. Um, so somehow something, maybe, yeah. I don't know, maybe your negative's also canceled yeah. then or something for that to have been the case. All right, questions on this? All right, so go to the back of the chapter now, page 308. Page 308. And read problem number 11, if you would, for us. Kendall, problem 11 there on page 308. <laughs> All right, at your seats. And set up and solve. Getting more comfortable with the sketch. Did we name the 25 centimeters as radius 1 because it is the radius of surface 1? And the 15 centimeters is radius 2? Both radii positive. centimeters, which makes this a diverging lens. All right, Michael, Audrey, how'd we do? First we have the negative, or the positive, we have negative at first, we have the negative. Okay, does it make sense now? Again, they both, both radii are going away from the object. Now, again, if the object had been over here, both radii are negative. Uh, but this would now be surface one, so, so radius one. This would be surface two, so radius two. Both would have been negative had the object been on the other side. Math still would have worked out the same in the end. 
this would have made it a little bit more, you know, 1 over negative 15 minus 1 over negative 25. A little bit different, the way it plugs in there. All right, Audrey, questions, comments? I got a few parts of it mixed up. Okay, Do you, which ones? Um, I got radius 1 and 2 wrong, and then I got the negative. Okay, does it make sense now how and why? Now, we say lens maker equation, and the idea is that in the old days, when people had to get lenses made, they would actually grind the lenses to the exact specifications. Nowadays, of course, computers control it all. Anyone been to the eye doctor, you've seen those machines that actually grind the lenses and polish them and make them smooth. Well, anyway, but it all starts somewhere. And it starts by you getting your eyes checked, right? You go there, and what they do is they put the little goofy thing up to your face and tell you when is the hot air balloon in focus or the tree or the farmhouse or whatever the picture is, right? You don't know what I'm, you don't know what I'm talking about. You guys know what I'm talking about. Okay, this is what they do. All right, and what they're doing is they're trying to determine where is your own eye's natural focal length? What, where, where are your eyes at? And based on where your eyes are at, they can figure out what focal length you need. If you are nearsighted like myself, like a lot of people are, they know you need a diverging lens. The more nearsighted, the stronger the lens you need. If you're farsighted by some weird chance, they would give you converging lenses. They already know what focal length you need. They don't use this equation, so to speak, or the computer doesn't, to find the focal length. They already know what focal length you need. They also know what material you're gonna get the lenses made out of. You know this, that you can get them made out of different substances, and if you want the thinner lenses, which don't look as nerdy, and are lighter on your face, and that kind of thing, okay, well that changes the index of refraction. Contacts have a different index of refraction as well. They already know what index of refraction is going to be. They also know that for glasses, they want the front of the glasses all to look the same. Just a little bit of curvature outward away from the user. Slightly convex. That's already predetermined. And that's going to be toward the object. What they don't know yet, what do we need to do with the back side of the lens? How do we grind it? Now, of course, they also have to account for where does the optical center need to be and all of that. But that's really the thing in question. And that's what we see with problem number 12, is what's that second radius? So problem number 12, go ahead and read that for us if you would, Michael. A certain plexiglass lens with a focal length of negative 12 centimeters, if the side toward the object is convex with a radius of 30 centimeters, what is the radius on the other side? And is the other side concave or convex? We already know the focal length needs to be negative 12 centimeters. It says the lens is going to be made out of plexiglass. I don't know that they actually make them out of plexiglass. Maybe they do. I know it's supposed to be more break resistant anyway, but we could flip back a few pages, page 294, and we can see that plexiglass has what index of refraction? 1.51. So I'm going to plug in 0.51. We also know that for this particular lens, the first surface is going to be convex with a radius of 30 centimeters. That's a one foot radius. Okay, so that's, that's, you know, think about it. That's a pretty big circle. That's, for a little bitty lens, that's pretty, probably about right for this. So the convex side is going to be toward the object. And that's going to have a radius of 30 centimeters. That's going to be surface one. This is going to be radius one, and this radius is going to be positive. So I already know I've got a positive 30 right here. The question is, what do I do with the other side? We're going to solve for R2, and this is actually how the lens maker equation would practically be used. Does that make sense? So, um, hmm, what do you suppose we should do to solve for R2? Let's start by taking the reciprocal of negative 12 and divide away the 0.51. Once that's been divided away, are the parentheses necessary any longer? No. So what we've got here is a negative 23.52 blah 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 equals the reciprocal of 30 minus the reciprocal of R2. I don't want what I'm solving for to be negative but I can send it over to this side as a positive if I move this side over as a positive also. So I'm going to say that 1 over r sub 2 equals the reciprocal of 30 plus the 23.52 that's on the calculator. So just tap the negative button to make it positive now on your screen. Add the reciprocal of 30. 
And what we have on the calculator is the reciprocal of radius 2. Right? We follow in the algebra. So just take the reciprocal. And what should be the radius of curvature for the second side? Very small. You never... You know what? Let's backtrack here. 12 negative reciprocal divided by 0.51. You're right, I didn't get that either. I don't know where that... It seemed like an awfully big number at the time. Like, oh, well, nobody's saying anything. Wait till I'm done with the problem. And I'm thinking, that can't be right on my answer either. Okay, people watch on YouTube. How about the negative 0.1633? Do we like that number? Okay. It couldn't have said something sooner. Come on now. All right, so we're going to have the positive... 0.1633, some people's students. All right, and that's going to um, add the reciprocal of 30. Yeah, this number looks so much more like it. Yes, okay. I don't have the answer key in front of me. I'm like, I know 0 0.04 centimeters is not the right focal length. There's no way. What is the right focal length, or uh, right radius of curvature? Hey, you can't be more wrong than I was. Call it out here, folks. 5.08. I was like, I know, but I don't want to be like you and be wrong. Thanks, Kendall. All right, so the second radius is 5.08. Now think about it. The next radius, whatever it is, is positive 5.08, meaning the radius of this second side has to go which direction? That way. For the radius to go that way, will this be convex or concave? Concave. Will it be big, really concave or slightly concave? Really concave. Okay, so we've got a radius here for radius 2 of approximately 5.1 centimeters. It is very much a concave side. That's probably about like my lenses. The, the, the curvature on the inside of the lens is dramatically greater than the curvature on the outside. This is probably somewhat similar to where I would be. Um, I don't actually have my prescription memorized off the top of my head. All right, questions on this. All right, now, your homework for this weekend is to study pages 292 to 304 because we have a quiz coming up in our next lesson. Quiz coming up Monday over pages 292 to 304. 292 to 304. No written homework this weekend, but do take time before Monday to look over pages 292 to 304. Be prepared for a quiz, and then uh, we'll be wrapping up over the next couple of days. Chapter 20, and being ready for a test over chapters 19 and 20, mirrors and lenses. All right, have a wonderful rest of your day, and you are dismissed.